Hey -o everyone, Misha B. Barkin here. I've talked about how to be yourself and be furry around those who aren't in the community. If you haven't seen that, I made a video on it years back. But that one sucks, so watch this video instead. That being said, while most people in today's world are accepting or at least neutral about furry stuff, there are people who just genuinely hate furries for whatever reason. This could be due to many things, from blatant misinformation to thinly veiled homophobia. Today I want to talk about why furries are hated by some, where this hate commonly happens, and what you can do to keep yourself safe, sane, and even sometimes laugh at the people trying to bring you down. So why the furry hate? Why is there so many people who just hate furries? Well, let's talk real quick about how furries tended to be represented in the media in the past. You lot likely remember the CSI episode. In case you don't, however, season 4 episode 5 titled Fur and Loathing, where I guess through an accident they find a dead guy in a raccoon costume insert a roadkill joke here and that leads to them going to a furry convention, I guess. I haven't actually seen this episode if I'm being honest and it's been my goal in life not to see it. Their evidence leads to the two attending a plushies and furries convention where Grissom and Willows discovers there is more going on among the attendees than just dressing up. <laughs> Basically, furries were portrayed as nothing but sexually horny deviants who only go to cons and stand around and fuck in the suits and just be a disgusting menace to society any chance they get. Do you have a name, Miss, uh... My friends call me sexy. This is pretty damn not true. Now, of course, there's some real odd characters in the group, and I don't mean the openly gay or sexually active furries. That's absolutely fine and honestly a part of any community. I mean the people who are just gross towards everyone every chance they get. You know the ones within three messages they sent you a sleeping in bed with you sticker. But to be honest, people like this exist in all different walks of life. There's always gonna be creepy and unsettling people. It's just unfortunately magnified when the label furry gets tagged onto it. Now, I'll be the first to admit. Furries can sometimes have a personal space issue, but to sit there and portray an entire convention and by extension furries as nothing but sexually charged people who only bang in the suits isn't really great. Sure, it's laughable now, but this has had and continues to have a negative impact on the view towards furries, as people will oftentimes cite this episode when discussing why furries are bad. There's also the discussion of furry hate being thinly veiled homophobia, and honestly I can kinda see the reasoning behind this one. It's definitely not a stretch to say that some people use being overwhelmingly toxic towards furries as a scapegoat for being homophobic but having it be more acceptable by society, as a lot of this community are part of the LGBT community to some degree. It's not acceptable to make fun of someone for their sexuality, but targeting a community that consists of a majority of LGBT folks? Well, I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Lastly is the internet's fixation on cringe culture. I was gonna make a full video about this, then I didn't. Anyways, instead I'll talk about it here. Cringe culture can lead to unnecessary harassment towards people just enjoying something they like, if it happens to be weird. It's important to mention here that weird doesn't inherently mean bad, at least in my opinion. Furry stuff is weird, but that's okay. Embrace it. Cringe comps actually helped in scaring me away from the community the first time in all honesty, as it sort of paints a picture that all furries are like what's in these compilations, when that's simply not the case. There's also the blatant misinformation rampant and widespread in anti-furry spaces. One of my recent coffee donations actually mentioned that they were pretty anti-furry, or at least skeptical of it, thinking that most if not all of them were zoo They then decided to do their own looking into the community, as encouraged by some friends of theirs who were furries, and, well, they came across my channel. That's wild to think about, that someone could just stumble upon my channel and my content at any time, and that makes them realize that furries aren't so bad. Warms my little heart. The point is, misinformation like that is everywhere, especially about the furry community. I'm not just gonna sit here and pretend zoo don't exist in this community. But to say that it's a majority of furries is absolutely ludicrous and extremely false. Just one glance at how furries treat those with Zeta symbols shows you the majority's opinion on zoos. In case you don't know, they've been using this as a symbol to find each other and be proud of shagging their dog without its consent. It's absolutely disgusting, and for people to try and throw me in the same category as sick individuals like that, it makes me want to barf. So we've gone over the why, but let's talk about the where. Where are you most likely to see anti-furries? Well, first and foremost, obviously online. I've met almost nobody who has had an issue with furries in real life. People in your day-to-day -day lives don't really care, or don't care enough to vocalize it. I'm actually more surprised by these poll results in the fact that there are many furries who said they haven't experienced any hate. Now keep in mind this is an absolutely minuscule data pool, and the bigger results are likely different, but still interesting nonetheless. Many online spaces have subspaces where furry haters go to yank each other's dicks about how much they hate us, but other websites such as iFunny are chock full of furry haters. Another pretty prominent space for furry hate is TikTok, actually. I've posted one video and received hate for it. My friend Dizzy posts cute videos in her suit and has received tons of hate for this for something extremely harmless and quite frankly adorable. Hello, I'm a nocturnal placental flying mammal, a member of the family of Pterodidae or Pterodidna. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm a bat! <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I am. I mean, a bat sona? A bat suit? The purple? How can you hate this? Come on. Anyways, another common place for furry hate is actually public schools. I know that a portion of my audience are minors still in school, do your homework, so you know what I'm talking about. When I was in school back in 1784, the furry community was described to me in a pretty negative light, so I just believed it and continued to spread the same misinformation I'd been fed. Now, I never bullied any furries IRL, as quite frankly, I didn't know any, but I wasn't nice to them online at all, to put it lightly. This cycle repeats constantly both in online and offline settings. Person hears the term furry. Furry is given a hateful stigma. Person doesn't look into it themselves and spreads around this misinformation to new people. Rinse and repeat. So we've talked about why and where, but how do we deal with anti-furries? I think there's three main methods to deal with them that usually goes fairly well. And the nice thing is they're pretty different, so there's likely one that'll be good for you to use. Number one is to ignore them or delete comments. This is the method I'll use sometimes here on YouTube. Nothing you say is likely going to sway their opinion. They specifically came onto your page to get a rise out of you. Don't give them that satisfaction. Just quietly delete their comment or ignore them and odds are they'll go away. This only really works if there aren't that many of them or if it doesn't happen very often. If it starts to be a bigger problem, I'd suggest busting out the block button. Number two, fight fire with fire. This is personally my favorite one and is the most fun to me. <laughs> Basically, I do reply, but it's either a snarky one-liner, something very obviously dripping in sarcasm, or just, okay, okay, or yikes. Writing can be a challenge, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's fucking dumb, and you shouldn't have typed it. My favorite one of this was when a Gacha Life channel called me cringe. I was like, buddy, Come on. Cringe culture is dead and all that jazz, but pop meat kettle, my guy. <laughs> Keep in mind, this one's got the highest chance of either returning trolls or new ones, but considering how stupid they can tend to be, it's a lot of fun. Number three is block, block, block. This is the most nuclear but effective option. Just block them. Problem solved. It's the quickest and easiest way to get rid of the problem. It's your profile, who cares how many people you block? Now sure, they might gloat about it to their fellow basement dwellers, but honestly, who cares? You're not gonna see it, and you both will forget each other exists by the end of the day. They might come back and make alt accounts and such just to harass you, which one, sad, and two, just keep blocking them. Eventually they'll get bored or deterred and leave you alone. So, to the end of the video, sorry this one took so long again. I don't really have a reason this time. <laughs> Hopefully it's a bit more clear why unfortunately furry hate happens and what you can do to keep yourself safe in the wild west of the world wide web. Anyways, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.